Hi guys. Whew, scoff it to your leverage with Mona in the fatigable heights. So I just did one more change. Um, season two, episode seven and eight. Oh, this dress is a little bit more whew, cozy than I thought. All right. So I am ready for us to talk about the real housewives of Potomac. I am gonna give you guys a little mental health check um just to let you know i did um go live on ig at cafeteria labrish on friday november 5th and the live is still there i also um uploaded it to my youtube the last video i did um titled my neighbors attacked me on halloween um so i've been going through some frustrating things and it's really you know affected me in many ways and kind of like not kind of like but it's like done a lot to me um however i love this dress um i went to the reunion and i was there with the housewives of potomac and andy cohen of course um However, I want to give you last week's episode first before we dive into this. So, we house as a Potomac crab oil on land sinking sand. So, you know I missed last week because I had a lot going on this whole entire week. And so, I did not get to bring you the tea because I had my own business taken care of. They was on um, a lot. So... I did. This dress be needing a lot of adjusting. I see. Uh, yeah. So, I did go to um, through a lot last week, this last week. And uh, it's, uh, it's affected me. And so, when I go through the day, I'm not doing no video because I cannot put the makeup on and do all day and come and act like everything is good in the moment i can try to put it aside and do the videos because it is a part of my therapy and um something that i enjoy doing i enjoy bringing y'all the tea the coffee the laboratory and everything so um this is something that makes me happy when i start to tell y'all the tea so let's dive into it so gordon versus ashley um gordon forgetting the bus scene because he was drunk Ashley being salty she was just like defending me as minding me as business and then goes and asks if G had Alzheimer's so that was a no um Ashley versus Mia so blah 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 Mia so where's your husband Bumble clutch. <laughs> that was epic it was unexpected and it just occurred out of nowhere so that was a mess um ashley home with my kids mia are you sure uh mia knows how to give and carry okay i can tell you they about mia um okay 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 so oh my god oh my god raja o'hara voice g ashley do you read do you read a dime? Mia, no, she needs a pen. <laughs> Ooh, Ashley not being able to uh, complain about not being able to sleep. That was a mess. Um, Karen getting in the undersized cake. Uh, Candace's confessional was beautiful. Mia saying Ashley needs a big black pen. She has not... Um, she has not met Michael yet, and why? Uh, girl, Michael was not finna come through with those people, all right? You see, Michael wasn't having it all season. Karen coming out the cake was epic. Giselle saying Karen should be naked. Giselle, you need a man to pop out of a cake for her. <laughs> but, yeah, that was a good read, I guess, but... The fact is, Karen does have what she had. Okay. When Wendy Osefa said, 
and Gordon was Big Daddy Chief. That was everything. Um, Karen's invitation was a mess. The Butterfly Tales, uh, Mothman Prophecy. <laughs> Mia and Gordon versus the mom. Mia, this is not what we should be doing. You should be on the phone with your mom trying to make that right. Like, I don't even understand why you are on TV talking about it. Like, that is unheard of. And then you have... Yeah, listen, Mia, don't put the woman in too much of this thing. All right? Leave her out next season because I'm just not... I'm, I don't... You, okay, you said she wants to tell her story. We don't want her filming and um I just want nobody talking about your mom. Yeah, Candace need yeah, Candace, don't talk about a mom no more. Please, please, please. Um, Giselle's interior of her home is beautiful. Giselle is casually dating and the kids have a lot going on. Uh they said she's an emotional vampire and she's not ready, and that was kinda like cold. Like that was a lot. All right. Um, so Ashley, Ashley's confessional is very pretty. Um, I love Ashley's earrings in the uh, counselor scene. Michael uh, doesn't want intimacy, doesn't have the capacity. Michael doesn't want to engage intimately. There's a lot going on with this relationship. Ashley and Michael are headed for that, maybe divorcing. Um, this storyline can change with the two kids in place. So with the kids in place, the storyline can change. We'll see how it goes. We'll see, you know, what, you know, next season brings for Ashley and Michael because we didn't really see a lot. Of anything going on with them um, Wendy's photo shoot was beautiful her candid display was well um, done um, love where she is with her line um, Michael said Juan is interested he doesn't play games he gets to spend time with Juan why does he need anybody else Michael would have said more if Ashley didn't shut him up she said okay Michael and Ashley Ashley actually have zero chemistry and the hotel scene was predictable all right so, the reunion. All right, so I didn't even take notes of the reunion. I was just watching it. Um, there were a couple um, things that were um, standing out for me. So, yes, Wendy having the text messages on a poster board was epic. Um, Candace, it was, Ken, as I said, it was Candace's season. Um, they just couldn't place Candace beside... Uh, Andy. And so it was um, very apparent though that Candace was the one that everyone had something to talk about or say something to. So I don't like the fact that Candace spoke about Mia's mom and I don't want her to do that anymore. Um, however, I understand Candace's point of view when Candace talks about um, I, I'm, I was trying to find a napkin. Because <laughs> I want to fold it. <laughs> yes. Everybody was, you know, waiting for Candace and the napkin. And Andy's like, I can fold it for you. And she's like, no, I can fold it. So, you know, that was everything for me. I'm just like, okay, they're, they're doing a lot. Um, so... Candace is kind of like that type of person that you cannot push everybody like. So you're pushing her and you're pushing her and she's saying that she's responding to that. I did not like the fact that she threw the leaves, the, the, the lettuce, because that's where you're, you're taking it to a place of violence. So if somebody re retaliates in whatever manner, then you can't be upset. You can't expect that she's going to throw two lettuce at you because... Now she is upset that you have done something like this to her and she's responding in kind and she's going to make it, you know, harder, rougher, more. So with that, you know, it's, that's what that is. So, um, I would like to see, um, Candace, I don't know, Candace give good, gives good reads. She's a queen of reads on the show at this time and it's just to be established. And so... Everybody coming down at her is not, you know, right. But she can't be doing the violent stuff because that's not going to work. It's You're, you're going to be, like, pushed to the side. Um, and he did come down kind of hard on her. And he doesn't do that to, you know, a lot of people in the reality world. 
so where he does his reality shows, but he was really giving it to her. He's like, like, how do you, you know, like live with yourself after you do stuff like this to people? <laughs> like, not in those words. Um, but like, you know, that so that was like a mess. And then we had um um Mia, Mia and Candace having some, you know, back and forth and so on. And um it was nothing kind of outstanding of that for me. Um, I do agree that Mia probably should, you know, n like not bring her mother on the show and then talk about the fact that her mother did this and that and that and this because it doesn't put her in a good light. And so we want to avoid that. So that those type of stuff is, you know, like what would make somebody feel some type of way. Um... Um, that's basically it for me. The re that, that first episode was, um, Karen, Karen Huger. Karen was giving good, 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 good reads. Um, not many, but she was throwing some of them in there. Wendy Osefo, if I noticed, was sitting next to Andy. So, you know, whoever sits next to Andy is like, you know, the moment. So it was, as it is always, Giselle. And then it was Wendy on his other side. So that's to be noticed. Um, that's always to be noticed who's sitting right beside Andy because that's the person who brought it all season. And Wendy Osefa brought it all season, okay? She's the new it girl. And I like the fact that she, she when she speaks to um, Giselle and she lets Giselle know what Giselle has done wrong, she does it in a good way so that, you know, you have no question of, is this a malicious read or, you know, no. It's just like an intelligent response to the things that you're doing. And from somebody who reads through, you know, your actions. And that's something that I respect out of Wendy a lot because that's kind of like how I am. So I like it. I like Wendy. I like her being the new it girl. I like her energy and so on and so forth. Um, yeah, that's it for me. With that, I didn't have a lot to say about the reunion. Um, I didn't have a lot much that, you know, was standing out for me other than they, oh, they talked about Candace and her mom and her husband and the fact that, you know, they don't speak anymore and she don't know how she's going to fix it and so on. But that was going on too bad. That You can't just get up and go in the, in, in you know, round your dots of, you know, co-workers and just start, you know, laba your mouth, like just start tell them all type of things and question them and go on with those type of stuff because people are going to look at you like you crazy. Like you trying to put the man down. Like that's not good. And then like, you, you have to fix it, Doc, because you're the only one. You know what I'm saying? Like, you have to, like, majorly apologize to this man for even, you know, coming at him like that, um, regardless of the situation. Because family is family, and family business stay family business. But, Doc, you was coming with the drama, like, for real, for real, this season. Like, you brought it when you was doing all the day at your daughter's video shoot. <sighs> Something that we, you know, wanted to be, you know, celebrating and congratulating her for and then you know you had Mia who was you know ready to put her down and you were you know feeding the father so like I think that you should apologize to Chris and I think that you should break that down and make that never happen again in that manner um I know you came and made it juicy but I don't know you took it to a whole nother level and did that so and that's it guys for the real Housewives of Potomac. Um, I'm wondering if I should just throw in the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City right now too. Last week's episode was kind of dry for me. It wasn't really a lot going on. I didn't take much notice of it. This week's episode was very interesting because you had Whitney with her situation with um, Mary Mary, quite contrary, and um, that was something you know. I don't Mary. I don't know if Mary thinks she's God or if Mary is just crazy. I think she's a psychopath. 
allegedly uh, the character on the show. Uh, I think that it's a psychopathic uh, character and it just gives me, you know, like there's so much mystery about Mary, Mary quite so contrary. They, I wanna dig into it. I would love to get more. I, I went online and I saw this and I saw that, but I'm not seeing anything that makes me really go, mm. like, where is the story? Where is the back story? Where are the pictures of Mary, like, five years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago? Like, where did she come from? And how does she know these ladies and where did they meet? And, you know, all of these things, I am so interested to know about Mary. Um, Mary should give it to it there. She give it to her. She hand it to her pan up the plot away. Um, them take um um John the Baptist head and put pan and give to the man wife in the in the Bible. No, talk the truth. She get a big platter and she just put Whitney pan it and she just serve it to Whitney. She said, little girl, <laughs> no, Mary, 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 Mary. First of all, Mary, do our little um, um, cooking um, vid, um, event, and she did invite Jenny, so shade, um, and not unapologetic shade, like just shade. Um, and then Mary literally invited Whitney. Okay, so... She tried to <laughs> she tried to invite Whitney and Whitney was not responding quickly enough for her like Whitney didn't answer her phone within 24 hours her call and Mary said okay she decided to she was having an it italiano it's still me stone saying that as some Mary stone too. <laughs> The same way that I sound saying Italiano, that's Italiano. That's the same way I married them. But Mary said she been to Italy and she knows the Italiano. So Mary at an Italiano uh, cooking event. Mama, Papa, brother, sister, everybody else. Mary said she invite Whitney. Whitney now answer. So Mary says she. Feel like say she decided to tell witness say to come dressed for like some street where it was mafia street where but she told her like it was Italian street where but she told her mafia street where and sent her picture <laughs> of what she should dress like for the Mafia Streetwear. So she tried to make sure that she came dressed exactly how she wanted to see her dressed the wrong way for the event. I ain't never seen nobody do nothing like that. That was everything. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, Whitney and Heather are very close. So, they must have had a discussion already. And Whitney knew that she wasn't dressing that way. Because, I don't know. Maybe Whitney's intuition is very good. And she picked that up. And she decided that she was not going to come dressed that way. Regardless of the fact, Whitney did not come dressed how Mary told her to dress. So... Mary did not like that. She took a major dislike to that, honey. And do you know what she did? She got upset. She actually said, you didn't come the way that I told you to come. 
like so you, it was a joke and you know you like you ruined it sis you you were making the joke at my expense why are you even talking about this joke because this joke would have never been funny to me mary carried it and carried it and carried it she said you didn't answer my phone call in 24 hours Whitney said I was carpooling she said over 24 hours you were carpooling she said she never called me back she was upset she was mad she took it from here to there to there and there and carried it elsewhere and then she said oh so something 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 blah say blah little girl so Whitney's like what why are you doing this to me <laughs> mama Whitney got off to the side and Lisa followed her so when Lisa followed her, Lisa went over there with her. When, no, not Lisa, Meredith. Meredith followed Whitney off to the side and tried to console and comfort Whitney and help Whitney in her time of need. So Whitney was crying and then she started to talk and she let out the fact that, you know, because last week, one of the things was that um, Lisa had an event that, she brought and invited somebody that used to go to Mary Church that has a lot of bad things to say about Mary and introduced that person to Meredith. Meredith didn't know how to take it because you know all Lisa, you know all Lisa work. Lisa style is like, I'm just going to bring somebody. I'm just going to send somebody or I'm just going to let somebody else do the job. So I'm going to do it that way. So either I'm going to send them, bring them, tell them to call you, text you, whatever. I'm I'm the one doing it though, you know. So she didn't want to come and tell Meredith all the things that this man had been saying. She brought them in and just casually, in fact, you know, um, introduced him to Meredith. And then he began to tell Meredith all the bad things about Mary, Mary, quite contrary. So Meredith didn't know how to take it and she was saying they... It was kind of weird to her. So when she took Whitney to the side, she started to ask Whitney like, you know, cause Whitney was like, well, you know, when I went to the church and I even donated to Mary's church and all this stuff. She, so Meredith asked her like, you know, do you know the guy? Because this guy was, you know, saying that, you know, she was like, oh yes, I had met him when I went to the church and he had told me some bad stuff. And he had told me to be careful of her when I was starting my friendship with her. And Meredith was like, what? And she was like, yeah, girl. And she was like, um, when he told me to be careful, he was like, she was like, yeah, the people over there think that Mary's God. Because if you look at the, um, I saw the picture I, when I went looking, the picture with Mary's grandmother on the wall with Jesus. And Jesus is like there with Mary's grandmother so if jesus is there with mary's grandmother jesus had to have met mary's grandmother and mary's grandmother had to have met jesus and they had to have seen each other or been same the same place at the same time in order to put them together in a painting and put it in the church so apparently mary's grandmother was god her and jesus i don't know and then Mary took over from her grandmother. So if her grandmother was Jesus, she's Jesus now. That's why they were fighting over the church because anybody are God. Anybody who own the church allegedly is God. So Mama, I don't even know how we're gonna deal with it. I don't know how it's gonna progress. I don't know what else is gonna be revealed. But that was quite a lot of information to receive. And it makes you want to know more about Mary Mary Quite Contrary. Yeah, you. All right. So, Jensha. <laughs> Jensha brought me here. 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 Yeah. Was, was, was that?
that a good intro or no? <laughs> Was that a good intro? I I know. I don't know. Can somebody tell me? Cause I am quite concerned. Like <laughs> anyway, yeah. moving on. Well. Last week episode of Jen Shaw was was a little bit not a lot going on, but Jen Shaw was talking about the fact they, you know, excuse me, um, Heather, Heather is the bone carrier. <laughs> Heather is epic. Heather gives tea and lets you have it. So Heather, she actually went and met with Jen Shaw and she told Jen Shaw that Lisa was having an event for a charity that Jen Shaw would have been interested in being a part of and Jen Shaw did not like that and she said Whitney was invited to the party that Lisa had so Lisa had this party and she invited Whitney and she did not invite Jen Shaw and Jen was not pleased about it and so this week when they all met up at I believe it was Mary's Italiano cooking show um somebody mentioned the um event and I think Heather wasn't invited either I don't know but Heather gives <laughs> Heather kept silent. And it was funny about Lisa. Because you know what's funny about Lisa? She kept her event and she was like, oh yeah, and this happened and that happened and that's why you guys are invited. <laughs> when you watch a show bait, you're just like, why? And then she's like, throwing shade. So, she was like, um, Jen Shaw and everyone else at the table were all having their meal and somebody brought up the fact that Lisa had this event and Mary says oh I wasn't invited and Jen Shaw says well I wasn't invited either so don't feel bad and you know Lisa has been on a season of I just want to be free and I don't want nobody to tell me what to do and ask me no questions and da 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 so da 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 so that came up again uh da 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 uh, so she was da 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 dying, and uh, then it became the issue with Whitney and Mary, and on and on and on and on. The ladies had that occurring. They were about to go on some bus ride, bus trip, bus somewhere. All of the ladies, and you know, a couple of you know, they were there. And I think they had all uh, convened in the bus by this time and were almost there if they weren't there. Jen Shaw pulls up and she's talking to the ladies for a little bit and then she gets like a phone call or something. And I don't know if she got, she came there with the intention. I don't really remember, but it was. <laughs> so she says on the bus to Whitney, she's like, help me take this off. So they took the mic and so on off of her and she ran out of there like her feet were on fire. Wait, she said that her husband had met into an accident and she had to go be by his side, honey. And she had to leave right away immediately. <clears throat> Excuse me. In that moment. So she got to leave. She left. When she left, not much long after, they were still seated there. The uh, people came to arrest her and take her away, but she wasn't there. So they were asking for her and the cast was telling them that she had went to her husband who had had an accident. And they were like, oh, oh okay. And they were asking them, like, why, you know, why, why are you here? Like, why are you asking for her? Is she okay? Is she in trouble or, you know, whatever? 
and they were like very tight-lipped about it and it was a lot going on and production caught all of it and it was and so Gentile knew they were coming <laughs> I don't know if her attorney called her or what it was but she wasn't going to turn herself into them on the show so she didn't do that she made sure she said take this off of me so she could go without all that and go get her business settled in private and that was that so i want to see what the next episode is going to be like i want to see what's going to happen for the rest of the season i want to know why lisa oh lisa remember she started i was going to say why did she separate herself from jen and try to shape jen but i remember jen shaw was at the snow the, the they were skiing and she called Jen and she said, come with us. And Jen was like, no. And she stayed with Whitney and Heather and I think Mary. And she was calling her to be with her and Jenny. I don't know. And I think she had a friend there or something, I believe. I'm not sure. And so, yes. So that's the reason why Lisa is shading Jen Shaw. I didn't remember. So now I do. So I'm sharing that with you. So, okay, that's it for me. Um, I'm excited to see the next episode so that I can share that with you also. I want to thank you guys for sitting with me. Thank you for giving me your energy. Thank you for talking to me. Thank you for your comments, guys. Remember, if you like what you've seen and you are wanting to become a sub, like, share, subscribe, comment, leave some feedback. Let me know what you think. Do you think Jen Shaw knew that the people were coming? Do you think that she was trying to hide from the cameras? Do you think that the team... Somebody on the team was telling some tea to the damn people. And do you think that they revealed anything about Jen Shaw that was like potentially like uh, damning? And um, let me know what you think about my review. I want to thank you so much for uh, being here with me at Cafetier Labrish. As always, it is me, Mona in the Fatigue of the Heights. And I want to thank you for helping me to have the therapy moment um because if i did not have um you then i would not have very little people right now i have so this is um really much my therapy because i separated myself from a lot of people and i am more inclined to share myself with people from a distance and i think that's a part of the way that i will be revealing some things to you um for the times to come using this channel this channel is um something that was inspired to me by my spirituality and so at the end of the day it is what it is um and god my eternal father, the angels, and my spiritual family. Um, I thank them so immensely just giving me the idea to do this because I didn't even know that this was something that I wanted to do, but I'm enjoying myself. And not only am I enjoying myself, I feel better when I get into this moment, even though it's like I'm fighting so hard to get up and do these videos. I am fighting so hard um with everything that's going on with me um and i know it's because it makes me feel better so um anything that makes me feel better um is just like what's been like you know a little broken for me um like my job because i love my job um <clears throat> but you know i took this mental health break or whatever and i am i cannot wait for this to be over i cannot wait to not i i mean i i um i bought proper to school today um it was hard getting out the door because papa hadn't been to school for the, the week um bringing my son outside and seeing these people coming in at the same time and knowing that they're like you know planting these stuff is psychologically like 
a deterrent for me for like moving and I feel like I just want to stop moving until I move like I feel like I wouldn't go outside until I move you know what I mean and that's hard for me but I can't live my life like that so that's the reason why my doctor um recommended to me that I keep going with my videos and I keep putting them up and I keep doing this and I don't stop so that I can do this you know um get dressed and feel pretty and um you know put my makeup on and you know make you guys laugh like how I like making people laugh hopefully you guys laugh and um share my energy with you because my energy is good and my frequency is high and I determined to share that good with people and I get to do that with you so that's why I told you that my um, channel is not about bringing nobody down we talk about everything but it's not about bringing nobody down it's more for uplifting people and for the people that I love I just will go a little bit harder than when I bring the tea about anybody else. And when I say love, I just mean like, you know, I love Kelly Rowland and, you know, I'm coming with her part three soon. <sighs> I have so much to talk to you about. <clears throat> so, Portia's new um, reality show. I haven't really seen that yet, so I gotta get to that. Um, I wanted to just drop in and talk about the Alec Baldwin thing. I was like you see how far that was i'm going back like two weeks um i was saddened to see they the young lady had gotten killed you know on set like you know bruce lee and bruce lee's son um like they and i was very very disappointed and i know they a lot of people it just i wouldn't say that it's not probable but it's just a little hard to um, accept or understand, you know, why that happened. And it seemed a little like a setup. But, you know, what can we say? They, you know, I'm a conspiracy theorist, but. <laughs> you know, I'm a conspiracy theorist, so you know, I talk all type of stuff. Um, yeah, that was interesting to see. And so, I feel it for Alec Baldwin. I think that there got to be changes on the set and the rules of the set of how, like, we're in modern days now, 2021. So, it should even be no live gun. Somebody brought a live gun to set and somebody died. So, I just don't understand. Um, I'm going to bring you the lock and key review on my next video. So, I have that to bring to you. Um, I watched Drew Barrymore's The Stand In on Netflix also. I'm going to bring you that. Um, because for me, it's hard to, like, concentrate on, like, my shows. It's hard to sit and watch them because what's going on in my personal life, I think about it all the time. Like, I, I just think about it over and over and over and over and over again. And it just brings me to that place. And then, like, even when I'm not thinking about it and I'm like, you know what? Let me watch something so that I can um, take my mind off of it. I still, while I'm watching it, I start talking to myself about what happened to me and this stuff and these people and, you know, and so on and so forth. Because I'm still sitting in it and because of how I feel. So, like, oh, that right there is the hardest part. This is the hardest part. Because when something bad happened to me, I played it over and over and over and over again. So this thing, I played it over and over and over and over again in my mind. And then, like, when I try to, like, take my mind off of it, my mind still go back to it. And my mind's talking about it. Talking about it, talking about it, talking about it. And I have to try to hard to focus on something. So I, like, like shows, shows, I don't, can't even, like, watch no movie like that. I kind of, like, have to, like, try to get a comedy so, like, I could laugh. So... Drew Barrymore is the stand in. It did make me laugh. That movie is so good. Watch it. <laughs> she, this this is crazy. The woman was an actress and she had a stand in and 
she wasn't paying attention. So she messed up her life and she had to go to rehab and the stand-in came and she sent her in her stead and the woman just took over her life and go on with a bag of things and it was just a big mess. So that was just so funny to me that I would recommend you watch that movie on Netflix, um, Drew Barrymore, The Stand-In. Um, that's that for that. I wanted to talk about... Winnie and her husband was cute on the poll. The poll that was cute. Um, and Jen and her son was cute. This 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 um this episode too. Um, the VR game is cool. My daughter wants one of that. Um, hopefully I'll be able to buy her one of that soon. In the name of Jesus, Amen. Um, and that was it. Um, Astro World. So I just wanted to drop that now and put that in here. Oh my God. I don't know what occurred. Um, I know my viewers because I be so late. I seen this early Saturday morning and I was like, what is this? And I had the pictures and everything and everything. Everything being this phone. So I don't know why I even do it. Because I like to show you my outfit. Like, this is a part of my whole life. Like, getting dressed. So, like, you know, I'm not partying anymore. I'm not going out anymore. So, I am like, what's up? Oh, I'm not partying anymore. I'm not going out anymore. And so, look at my coat pocket. I have something in there, too. Have you seen my ca cash app card? It's on my bed. That's weird. Yeah, it's over there in my bed. Oh, thank you. You see it? And I'm done here. All right, look at my pocket. Just say I look a change, too. Yeah, love you. Um, So, love you, too. So, um, Astro World. So guys, I am so saddened to see this occur. Um, it was crazy. Um, this was something that was unheard of, unthought of, um, and and um, very hard to see. So you know, they Travis Scott put this. Um, festival um so this festival was so packed and i don't even understand what was going on the festival was so packed so much people so much body so much people so much body i didn't even understand our festival like that could be going on in a time like this i, I you know like generally we're in a pandemic um that was crazy and then there were things that were happening allegedly that is what sparked this alleged surge so People are saying that people were going around and pricking people with a needle. And they said even a security guard was pricked by a needle. So that caused like a little bit of the panic that was going on. Because people were trying to get away from, you know, like if me and you standing together, you're like, oh my God, something pricked me. Like a couple of people said, you know, like that starts to happen. People are going to be running all around. Excuse me. So that happened. Um... When that happened, people started panicking. They said that it was like a pit, like they, I don't know, what, a, a moss pit. I don't even know where my laptop is. Like rockers and, you know, you know, like the rock and roll people, they would do like have a moss pit when they have their, you know, their concerts and their events or whatever. But I did even see clips of people that are like rock stars. And when they see something like that, they stop and they say like, everybody just pick up the person. Like they, they were like, pick him up, pick him up. Somebody fell, pick him up, pick him up. Let's get him up now. You know, what is it that we say? We say if somebody falls, pick him up. That's what it is. That's the, the, the motto of this thing. This man, allegedly, Travis Scott, he tell the people to rage. And rage is like when you're like all over the place and just like start do all type of things like you know like the rock people then but just angrily like mad like ultra road ferocious vicious like just do your body all over 
So everybody start do that now and rage and then the rage and the anger, everything I must let it out, let it out from the security guard them allegedly. Let it out by because him talk about the security them and said so the security them get too much trouble and like move them out of the way and like he must say move them out of the way but like him why you break the barrier them and him why you go on with a bugger thing so she was say you yeah, are fans like that so he was arrested twice already they said allegedly for inciting people to rage and like making people like break barrier there is a man that said that he told him he told the crowd like jump off a one 15 foot floor the 15 foot part 15 foot or something like that allegedly don't don't quote me it i and the man was up there and he jumped off and broke some part-time body like him neck him spine i don't know what it is but this man jumped off into the middle of the and him there over there like yes let's jump and i count down 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 for the man jump off him lucky the man that man that man never did but him never lucky because him never satisfy him never satisfy with none of the people them that got hurt at any of his events before apparently allegedly because he's still inciting people to rage after he did that twice and the people them was mad put him in jail lock him up this is something that bring like you know you get a kick out of it or something like you know it you know it brings the who the, the 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 adrenaline to him or whatever i don't know i'm just saying like i can imagine anything further now you know our favorite celebrities some of them don't even have a like a real mind of their own you know this is a conspiracy theory part coming in now listen up don't get triggered this is conspiracy theory they don't even really i really like a mind of their own so in this case like i feel like this man it just put out there and told to tell the people to rage and all of this and then like whatever is like feeling you know um like that's what should be done is the one that is getting the satisfaction from it and i think that that's what happened at astroworld and he had on a shirt and you had people like jump into a portal and then the show was like a portal and it was a portal and a portal and a portal that's why i make sure that i tag nasa in my post that i'm talking to the people because i want to make sure that everybody don't jump ship and leave and go to mars before my life fix because i need the people to fix my life before everybody decide to go to mars venus jupiter anywhere else okay i need them to help me first so i tag nasa because i want nasa and everybody else to know hello okay now guys I'm going to be bringing in an update for the Astro World because I do want to talk about it just a little bit more in depth. I am just giving you a little taste of my thoughts about it so far. Um, they're saying it was a ritual. They're saying it was like a sacrifice. They're saying it was Sam Hain a couple of days after Sam Hain. And it's a like a pagan holiday where there's like a like witches get together and have like a celebration. Allegedly a days when you like you know give energy to you know whatever they serve and so on and so forth so that's what's being said out there allegedly um um Kali was there and they said she was taking pictures of the bodies that were leaving they said it seemed allegedly that there are more bodies than what they're saying and children were there 10 year old 14 year old 16 year old me I would never have my child at no festival like that I don't know which parent bring, brought, or sent their child to a festival like that in the middle of a pandemic at a time like this. I don't know how that was allowed to occur. So that by itself is just a major violation. So I feel like at an event like that, you know, children should not be. However, that's like stepping into like what parents do for them, their children. And that's a different law. I'm not interested in that. Um, so that's it for me and that's it on the astro world and travis scott for now um i want to thank you for listening i want to thank you for your energy i want to thank you for being here with me at cafeteria labrish i did the uh, another video before so you know i'm getting tired now um as always shopping spare for me i'm a money tree seven nine kika lata four plus three and when you come about tell a wife of a flea man pay down panika you know take charity so i said i'm trying to change date i want to give a do a little introduction like 
I'm coming out like a starlight busting out in the night. No contest, men no fight. I claim it by right. And Jackie gave me insight. I pre celebrity life. And when we bring the team, I bring it spiritualized. Let me know what you think about day. If you like what you see, like, share, subscribe, comment. Let me know what you think about Astro World. Let me know what you think about Travis Scott. Let me know what you think about this whole occurrence. Let me know what you think about the Real Housewives of Potomac review that I did. Let me know what you think about the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City review that I did. And give me any of your comments, good or bad. I answer to every comment. I love your feedback and I thank you so much. Have a good night. Love you. It's been Coffee Tier Lavish with Mona in the Fatigable Heights. Bye-bye.